Hey Westside, this is Pastor Ralph. It's May 30th, and I want to give an update to you on where we stand with COVID-19 and what we're doing in response to these things as Westside Church. On March 13th, Governor Inslee had issued uh, that all gatherings of 250 more, 250 people or more would cease. Uh, on March 15th, uh, we moved all of our worship to our online platform. As things progressed, um, there was the stay-at-home order uh, session had a meeting. We met with healthcare professionals um, and some elders and staff uh, to give recommendations to session um, and and just to affirm what we were doing is shutting everything down. Then it became an order, and so we were just in line with what was happening. Um, the first thing we really focused on as a church was just immediate response in the month of April. Um, really trying to nurture and encourage one another as a family as much we, as much as we could. Uh, deacons really stepped up and began doing uh, regular care calls, uh, just making sure uh, that everybody in the congregation is doing well. Uh, we continued and affirmed that we are going to provide uh, food to our neighborhood through the Bite to Go program, which is in partnership with the schools. And, and then we really sought to try to encourage one another uh, to grow, to worship, uh, to pray. Uh, we, we started uh, daily meditations Monday through Saturday that our staff led and invite uh, the whole congregation to join, to be in God's Word together, to be reflecting on God's Word together. Uh, we started a Bible study on uh, hope in desperate times through the book of Revelation on Monday and Wednesdays. I started a lecture series uh, we started doing on, I started a lecture series on humility and leadership on Thursday evenings. Uh, we have Sunday school um, videos being created um, by the Grovers on a weekly basis that are a lot of uh, energy and effort go into those things. Uh, youth uh, began different things, including a Minecraft online gaming experience, uh, all different things of, of continuing to try to both connect and encourage. Uh, Patrick Smith started leading uh, Wednesday um, hymn nights where we gather to be able to worship together. We even did an intercessory prayer concert. And, and these were all things that we really began to build up infrastructure, began the process of doing. In May, uh, Governor Inslee put out a four-phase approach to reopening, and which began to give a greater sense of clarity about where we stood. And in that initial um, four-phase approach, it, it put forward that really anything that we were going to do as a church was going to have to wait until phases three and four. Then, uh, on May 22nd, President Trump made a statement uh, to all the governors of all the states and encouraging them that worship and church is essential and that the state should allow churches to reopen. Technically, what Trump did was not an executive order. It was just a very strong word of encouragement to the governors to recognize the significance of Christian gatherings and what we do. The CDC still says that what you're supposed to do as a church is to follow your state guidelines. Governor Isley promised to um, update and consider what President Trump had said. And um, last week on May 26th, tw May 27th, he, he gave a press briefing and, um, and he reported on what that update looks like for us. The, um, there, there are two significant things, and it has to do with both phase one and phase two, uh, pushing the possibility forward for some things that we could do together as a church family. I want you to know, though, that the first thing that it really encourages is, as much as churches are able to, that they would continue uh, meeting through the online format uh, in the Zoom meetings. The, the reason behind this is one of a concern for safety. One of the things that we found is, is that um, when you get large groups of people in enclosed spaces, this is the dynamic for longer periods of time. And church services, you know, an hour and 10, an hour and 15, and then you come in and you're meeting before and you may stay a little bit after and talk. 
Um, this is a longer period of time and exposure. The other thing that you may not think about is, is that, but we've looked into is, is that, that the, the six foot guidance as far as six foot between people, which is to try to help decrease the possibility of the spread. When you're singing, that really needs to increase uh, up to 12 feet. And this is the part where we've had stories of churches that gather, entire choirs get infected. A church in Germany was allowed to reopen and more than 107 people contracted COVID-19 through that worship service. And I think it was three people died uh, who contracted it. And so there is this concern about when you're gathering, and this is part of the order is, is that in phase one, the only way that you are supposed to meet is if you wanna meet in person, that it has to be done outside on the church property and no more than 100 people. Uh, in phase two, you can start to have uh, a worship service with 50 people or 25% of capacity of the room, um, which, whichever is, and, and the max out is at 50. Our sanctuaries, um, we can have 50 people in the room or we can have 200, so it works that we could have 50 people in our sanctuary, but that would be the max. Um, and, and that's something, you know, that we will look at at phase two. When Session made the decision to close the building, we closed because we felt like it was the right thing to do for the welfare of our church family and for the welfare um, of our community. We believe that as a church, we should be leaders in this and we should be leading the way of really showing the willingness to make sacrifices for the greater good. When we, when we made the decision to close, one of the things that we said is, is that when we can reopen, it's going to be the decision of session, and it's going to be based upon input um, from healthcare professionals in our church, as well as looking at the state guidelines. And just because w when we enter into phase two, we have the possibility of having a gathering of 50 people or less uh, in our sanctuary for worship on a Sunday morning, it doesn't necessarily mean that we will start that right away. Uh, we are gonna take time and we are developing a plan. Our first meeting of this task force of reopening uh, the building in a phased approach based upon the state guidelines uh, meets this coming Monday um, or this coming Sunday evening. And, and we're gonna work hard, we're gonna work fast, we're going to develop uh, what our strategy is for reopening. There are a lot of variables and factors as far as how we're going to clean things, making sure that common things that get touched like doors, um, we, we have to look at just the whole reality of the surfaces that people are using and the possibilities of contamination and how we need to go about cleaning those things. And because we have fabric uh, on our chairs, that, that complicates. Um, it will be a different setup in the sanctuary because of social distancing. There will be less chairs. We are also going to continue our online um, worship. That, there was a question about that of, you know, when we, when we reopen, will we stop what we're doing? It may be that for many people in our church family, the very best thing that you can do as far as the large gatherings is to stay at home and to join online until there's a vaccine. Um, I, there is this balance. We, I think we need to reopen the country. Um, I think it should be done carefully, but I think it needs to be done for a whole bunch of reasons. But as the church, the, what we're being able to do right now, of uh, practicing social distancing, large group gatherings, being limited, doing things uh, via online, it may not be ideal, but I do, I do believe that it truly helps. And so, um, we are working towards by the 13th or 14th of June to be able to share with you in the congregation how we're going to approach reopening the church and what that will look like. Uh, we're, we're, we've, we're beginning to gather resources. We're studying. Our first meeting is coming this Sunday night. Please pray for us. And as we talk about prayer, the, the thing that's on my mind, probably on many of our minds, is just what's happening in the country right now, because not only do we have a pandemic, which is probably adding fuel, but we have had um, this tragedy 
of a man named George Floyd who was uh, murdered because of the mishandling of his arrest by the police. And there has been riots, but, but it has mostly been protest. And the protest is one that needs to be heard because this sort of thing, if you haven't seen it, it should never happen. So will you pray with me? Loving Heavenly Father, I thank you for who you are and what you've done. I thank you, Lord, that there is affirmation that the church is essential. But Lord, as we seek to be your church and to live in service to you and to our community, lifting up the gospel, but also seeking to lead the way in goodness and righteousness, Lord, we lift up this process of reopening and we look forward to the day when we'll all be able to gather together in person. But until then, Lord, I give thanks for all the hard work that's been done that we can do these online services and we can meet virtually in all these different ways. But Lord, our heart breaks tonight, today, for what happened to George Floyd. And we pray um, that this would be a turning point in our country that um, the voice of protest of saying black people are afraid of police officers would be heard in such a way that it would lead to real transformation. Bless, Lord, our country, our world, bring reconciliation. Lord,